Coming barely a year after the previous installment, Capcom is set to terrify players yet again when Resident Evil 3 Remake drops in April. Announced in December, the turnaround on the latest reimagining has been extremely quick, and that's left fans in a frenzy trying to figure out how the classic survival horror game is actually shaping up. But there have been a bunch of previews and interviews with key creatives from publications such as Official PlayStation Magazine and Famitsu. And despite the swift turnaround, Resident 3 sounds even more ambitious than 2's remake, boasting changes and alterations that will either improve on the infamously rushed, but still great might I add, 1999 version or leave fans wishing Capcom never caught wind of the word modernising. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and this is Resident Evil 3 Remake, every confirmed and leaked detail we know. Number 10, Carlos's personality has been completely changed. Carlos is a character who is very, shall we say, of his time. A biohazard stomping mercenary and all around sweet talker, there wasn't much depth to him in the original game. He had enough personality to stand out and it was always fun to see Jill slap him around for being a big crybaby, but it's not the kind of characterization that that would hold up unchanged over 20 years later. Consequently, Capcom have explained that they've rejigged him quite substantially for the remake, making him more integral to the story rather than just being a big bad banter lad who kind of turns up now and again, and also altering his personality to be a touch funnier and a touch more badass. If I'm being truthful and I had all my cards on the table, I would absolutely model him on the spliff smoking Carlos of the movies, but this seems like a pretty good take nonetheless, mad hair and all, you know I'm someone who quite favours some stupid, stupid hair. Number 9. Jill's new costume is designed to be more practical. As expected, following Resident Evil 2's remake, 3's hero Jill Valentine has received a makeover that pays homage to the original look while updating it for a modern, photorealistic game. In the original title, Jill's stylish but impractical costume made her look like she was kind of planning on doing a bit of bar surfing in the infected Raccoon City, while the remake's garb has been intentionally altered to be more practical for zombie killing, made up of a tank top and jeans. And it's not a total loss, but I was kind of hoping that Jill would at least be able to bring back the old sweater around the hips look for 2020. Make it fashion again, stop being cowards, bring it back, it's cool and practical and very good. Likewise, while the design changes will no doubt inspire some ire among certain sections of the fans, just like the changes to Leon and Claire did, the original costume has also been included alongside Carlos's as a pre-order bonus. Number 8. The Gravedigger is back. While Capcom are making plenty of changes with the Resident Evil 3 remake, which I'll get into in more depth later, fans can now rejoice that the devs have confirmed that the Gravedigger boss will return in all of its glory. Wait. What do you mean you don't remember the Gravedigger? How can you forget this little wormy nice boy? Though Resi 3 repeatedly had Nemesis ruin your day with mini-boss encounters, that hulking lad wasn't the only advanced biohazard hunting you through the game and an extended sequence saw players chased underground by an enormous worm monster thing. It shows up again later on in the graveyard to be blown to smithereens. While many hoped that this slithering slug would return for the remake, it wasn't guaranteed, as Resi 2 rejigged a bunch of boss fights and enemy encounters, emitting the spiders in the sewer and turning the alligator fight into a glorified QTE for instance. Now though, all you Gravedigger fans out there can sleep tight knowing that this monstrosity will haunt your dreams once again come April. Number 7. Resident Evil Resistance is a fully fledged multiplayer mode and canon. Cheekily, Capcom actually revealed Resident Evil 3 Remake way before it was officially unveiled. That's because it first showed off Project Resistance, a multiplayer co-op experience built using the same engine as Resi 2, and fans were well, fans were mixed on it, to say the least. All I'm saying is, when you're being compared to Operation Raccoon City, you've probably done something wrong, unless you're, you know, Ben Roy and a fan of that for some reason. However, fears were alleviated somewhat when it was announced that this wouldn't be an individual release, but rather act as the multiplayer component for Resident Evil 3. 
the 4v1 mode sees four survivors attempting to survive an onslaught of beasties controlled by an evil player-controlled mastermind from afar, and it does look a cut above most other multiplayer resi offerings. Even more tantalizing though is that resistance is apparently canon, at least according to some leaked screenshots. How that works is yet to be seen, but should these characters prove popular, expect to see them pop up in other resi media. Number six, Brad Vickers has an expanded role. If we're being honest, Brad Vickers is barely a character. The dude shows up as the interchangeable helicopter pilot in Resi 1, and then cameos again in Resident Evil 3 to be brutally killed by Nemesis, and then reanimate as a zombie. Of course, this is the Resi franchise we're talking about, so little screen time or no, Brad naturally became a fan favourite and a source of plenty of memes. While the character is set to return for the remake, it won't be in the exact same capacity as before. The developers haven't revealed how his story has been changed, probably to avoid hinting at whether or not this version will make it out the game alive, but it's said to be even more of a substantial alteration than Carlos has received. He'll probably still bite the dust in my opinion though, as you can't really pitch Nemesis as this stars killing machine without him offering some beloved members. Number 5, there won't be any multiple endings or player choice. Right, okay, Resident Evil games haven't exactly been telltale stories when it comes to player choice or alternate endings, but they have usually embraced small moments of player driven freedom. In the original Resi 2 for instance, certain weapons became unavailable for the second character's playthrough, depending on your action and Resi 3 expanded on that by having diverging paths that subtly change levels depending on your decisions. Very subtly, may I add. It was very very subtle. Rather than expand upon these moments and give the player even more choice in the remake though, Capcom's instead omitting them entirely and creating one linear experience without diverting paths. In favour of one streamlined story, different end states have been removed as well. And that's a bit of a shame really, especially considering the bigger roles for Carlos and Brad, but if it makes for a stronger story overall, sacrificing these half-baked decision-making moments is probably the right move. Number 4, No Mercenaries Mode For a while, Mercenaries Mode was kind of the unsung hero of Resident Evil. When the series entered a downturn, this bombastic multiplayer suite was there to distill all the good parts down into something immensely playable. But it's been absent for a while now. It didn't show up in Resident Evil 7, failed to be revived for Resident Evil 2, and now it's been confirmed to sit out 3's remake as well. That does make sense considering that Resident Evil Resistance is being pitched as the premier online offering going forward, and resources were probably stretched too thin to also cram in mercenaries. Number 3, Nemesis's AI is a more advanced version of Mr. X, and he can run. As suspected, Mr. X's substantial role in Resident Evil 2 was partly due to the well-dressed stalker acting as a trial run for Capcom's take on a remade Nemesis in Resi 3. Like his tyrant cousin, Nemesis pursued players throughout the original game, popping up in key locations to give chase and pose a near insurmountable rocket launching threat. Like the new version of Mr. X from Capcom's most recent release though, Resi 3's remake will untether the menace and no longer relegate his appearances to certain set pieces. Even better, or worse, depending on how much you love playing hide and seek with a big muscly fella who just wants to turn you into a big Jill sandwich, the nemesis is going to be even more aggressive, smarter, and now can run. Now I know he did have a jog in the original which was telegraphed pretty spectacularly, but presumably he'll be able to execute that more often than before and be much faster than 2's tyrant. Presumably he also won't be foiled by door frames like old X either. He was by far the star of the original game, and it sounds like Capcom are going to recapture his genuinely horrifying glory in the remake. 2. It will connect with 2 story more explicitly While Resident Evil 2 was lauded for maintaining the quality of the original game, it didn't just copy it wholesale. The perspective and gameplay were obviously overhauled, but so were the puzzles, the story, and even entire levels. Still, it worked because the bones of the source material remained intact, and the new changes improved on weaker elements. The fact that Capcom pulled off the remixing with such gusto in that game then should make us cautiously optimistic about Resident Evil. Evil 3, which is apparently going to feature even more rearranged elements than the last game. You might have assumed that already, considering Carlos now
now has extended playable sections and Nemesis encounters aren't distinct set pieces, but it's still interesting nonetheless. Even more tantalizing, the devs have hinted that there will be way more crossover between Resi 3 and 2 than before as well. Considering these stories take place during the same rough time period, any references would be welcome in making them feel like closer companion pieces. Number one, it'll be way more action heavy. Now, one potentially worrying tidbit revealed so far by the devs is that Resident Evil 3 is being designed to have way more action than the remake of 2. Again, according to the Famitsu interview, the second game was designed to get players terrified of zombies again, while 3 is throwing all of its weight behind Nemesis. However, taking into account the source material, a newfound focus on action gameplay does seem like a natural progression. The first three games notched up the action with each subsequent release, so keeping faithful to the source material would see 3's remake boast way more balls to the wall shootouts than before. That said, Resident Evil's relationship with action doesn't always lead to great experiences. Capcom's desire to just turn Resi into a straight shooter has led to plenty of mistakes over the years, and there is the worry that the past could be repeating itself here. It seems a shame too to shake up the perfect balance, in my opinion, between action and horror found in 2019's installments so soon afterwards. Still, Capcom are on a hot streak at the moment and won't completely sacrifice the goodwill they've earned back by falling back into bad habits. At least, I hope not. For the love of God, I absolutely hope not. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are you looking forward to the Resident Evil 3 remake? I know I am. 2 was one of my favorite games of last year, and this could be even better. Either way, while you're down there, can you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Don't know what this is, but it's jogging. I don't know why I did this, but that's the only take I'm doing, so it's going in. <laughs>